So today I'm putting out a new guide on 3D characters and digital fashion because I found a new method which covers a lot of pain points people have had in the past. All softwares I'm going to be showing today are free and you're going to get access to tens of thousands of auto fitting free clothing assets, which is a huge win. So let me show you how we can do it. So for the character design itself, we're still going to be using Daz. This is old news. I've talked about this on my channel a bunch. I still prefer Daz above the rest for overall creation. The reason is pretty simple. It's a free software. You have basic sliders and morphs for changing the character around. Plus you have a marketplace with character specific plugins for niche things like face generator or other fun and useful stuff. 90% of the time, my characters start as a Genesis 8 base model. I usually bring that base model into Blender, change things around to make the character more unique. Now, this is where things change with my guide. In the past, if you wanted to create clothing for your character, I recommended you pay for Marvelous Designer because it's an amazing tool for creating clothing simulations and for crafting any garments that you want. Now, if you chose not to pay for Marvelous Designer, you are pretty limited to working with Daz assets from the marketplace or, of course, making them yourself, which is never a bad thing. I don't want you to think you have to do free methods. These guides are all about saving time, so let me show you my alternative. So enter Ginny 3D. This is a free software by Clo 3D, which is the company that owns Marvelous Designer. Now, I've been aware of Ginny for a while, but I didn't revisit it until I watched this recent Ask NK video, which just came out. First of all, if you're not subbed to Ask NK, a link will be down below. His channel is a great resource for anyone working in 3D. Either way, in the past, I kind of lumped this software up as similar to Vroid Studio, where it's a cutesy anime character creator. Ginny is marketed as a way to learn digital fashion fashion on a smaller scale. Well, I ended up tinkering around with it a bit more and I realized how good it actually is. All right, so let's take a quick step back. Let me show you step by step exactly everything that I do. So assuming you make your character like me and Daz, all you have to do is come over to figures and you're going to have the starter essentials by default already within here. So I'm going to load in a Genesis 8 basic male character. Now again, from here, if you want, you can change any of the sliders to customize your character. I'm just going to keep it default. I'm going to go up to file, export, and I'm going to export out this base mesh as an OBJ, which I've already done here. You see, I have the female and the male. Now that I have that, we can open up Ginny to start adding clothing to our characters. All right, so let's load in our custom character. We're going to go to designer mode and we're going to load in our avatar. So we'll go open avatar. I'm going to select the Genesis 8 male that I just exported as an OBJ from Daz. Now, very important here, if you want the auto fitting to work, you want to make sure that your unit scale is correct. So I know that I'm coming from Daz. I want to set this to meters to be correct. If for any reason you try something, there's an error or your clothing isn't auto fitting correctly, more likely than not, you just need to change the scale for things to work properly. So now that we have our custom character in here, we can come over here in the top left to the clothing section and we can add in some of this preset Ginny official clothing and you can see how our auto fitting will work. So we'll click complete and it'll do all of the work for you. So the awesome thing about this, you have Marvelous Designer simulation in here as well. So if we click simulate, you can actually click and drag and see this real time simulation of the cloth. There's also some very simple controls over here on the right, where if you just hover over it, it'll show you exactly what it does. You have one for width, one for length, and you can even create custom sewing. So if for example, I come in here and load in this t-shirt and maybe I want the sleeves to be a bit shorter. I can just grab length, grab the sleeve and move it back. Same goes with width. Now when we simulate, you can see the changes that we made. So very easy. I've also tested this on more complex characters. I loaded in my Mesmer character from my Elden Ring recreation video. And yes, it looked pretty hilarious giving him this puffer jacket and all this high fashion stuff, but it is good to know that this does work. Now here's where things get really interesting. Let's go back over to add. Right now we've just been in these official presets, but if you come over here to the purchase section, you can see all of these assets which I downloaded from the online store. And you don't even have to download these locally. It's extremely easy. Here's how you can do it. You just wanna click up here in the top left. This will automatically open up the store. Let's go over to price and set this to free. Now you see we have almost 12,000 free items here, which we can choose from. And some of these are just insanely cool garments as well as fabric. Once you find something you like, you just click add to cart here. You don't even have to download the files connected to this and install them anywhere. You can just come back over to Ginny, go to add, go over to your purchase section here, and this will automatically pop up and you could load it in directly from here. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Tons of different options available to you. Now, once you're ready to texture, you can come up here in the top left of this button icon, 
you're going to see your fabric over here on the left. So if I select the shirt and I click the plus, you can search through the store as well as your purchases for any type of material you would like. You can even directly view the store if you just click on this little icon right here. So I can easily just come on here and search for cotton. And then you can select to place on specific parts of the pattern, or you can just click replace all to place it on the entire shirt. Another cool little feature with the texturing, if we come over here, you can click on grayscale and that'll allow you to just choose any custom color up here in the top right. Now, another really cool thing you can do here is say I come in here and I want to add something like a trench coat, which I already have installed. I'll click complete. You can find these buttons right here and I'm just going to delete them. Now, when we simulate, this is going to completely open up because those buttons are gone and it's no longer fastening together. You can also add in your own custom graphics. So if you come to the graphics section, I've already saved this little YouTube icon PNG. We'll click open. You can simply just click exactly where you'd like to place it. Once you've done that, you can go over to the right and select this little pointer icon. And then once you click again, this will allow you to change the scale as well as rotate to position this correctly. So there's about everything in Ginny, extremely intuitive tool, whether you're not using Marvelous Designer and you just want to take these clothes directly into your 3D software, which I'm going to show you next. Or if you are using Marvelous Designer, this is still 100% worth using just because of the ease of use of fitting everything, making these minor adjustments just to get your overall look. And then if you want to take it into Marvelous to make any other intricate changes or to simulate the physics of the cloth itself, you can go ahead and click save as, save this as a garment file. If you don't want to use Marvelous Designer and you're ready just to start animating this character, what we can do is click over here in the top right to this little studio mode. And now down here in the bottom right, you can select the export FBX and then upload. This will upload this whole outfit to your profiles. So you can go back and reopen this whenever you want, which is very convenient. It's also going to just export the entire FBX file straight into your downloads folder on your computer once you click upload. So go ahead and do that. We're going to open up Blender and I'm going to show you ways where we can combine animation as well as some other useful things for this workflow as a whole. All right, so I am in a fresh Blender project file here. Again, if you go to your download folder on your computer, you'll find that FBX that you exported whenever you uploaded the file. I've just found the file in my downloads, control X and just place it in this folder here. I'm just going to copy this path imports. Now, when I import this, I'm also going to come over here to the scale and just set this to 10, just because by default, it's going to be a little bit small. And here is our character in our clothes. We'll switch over to the rendered viewport shading. And as you can see, nothing we even really need to do with the materials. If anything, you can come in here and kind of just mess around with the roughness, but it's going to look almost exactly like it did in Ginny, which is very convenient. So now let's talk about the next part of the workflow, which is actually animating this character or using it to create your own renders and animations. Well, first off, we need a rig for this character. So you have a couple of options. We can select our character. We can shift select our clothes and then just file export. I'm going to name this tutorial for Mixamo. And then over on the right, just go limit to selected objects and then click export FBX. So now we'll head over to Mixamo and we'll click upload character. And then we'll select that tutorial for Mixamo file that we just exported. Once you've uploaded, you can use the auto rigger in Mixamo, which is pretty self-explanatory. You just follow the prompts right here and then we click next. Now you can see your character is fully rigged. The one caveat to this being you're not going to have realistic cloth physics for the movement. So if you do want that, you need Marvelous Designer, which again, I recommend Marvelous Designer. It's a great software. If you're interested in the digital fashion, you can have a lot of fun with it. But either way, now you can just select any of these movements from the library and your character will be fully animated. You can see there's no sway to the clothes. They're kind of just pasted on the character. So keep that in mind. There's also just static poses as well, which is pretty cool. Once you have the animation you like, go ahead and download that. And then back in Blender, we'll just import in the FBX. Here's that idle animation I got from Mixamo. You can see none of the textures ported over, which is completely fine. All you have to do is click here, shift select the original character, and then click Control L, and then just click Link Materials. Let's do the same with the actual character. Shift select, Control L, Link Materials. So now you'll have an animated version of that character, again, without cloth dynamics. So keep that in mind. If you wanted to, you could probably fake it with some rigging or with a little bit of texture tricks just to add a little bit of wind or ripples to the coat. I've talked about something like that in the past. I still think if you're going animated clothing, fashion, runways, anything like that, 
Marvelous Designer Cloth Sims is probably your best bet. But if this is just a background character or you don't really care about the super realism of the clothing, then this is pretty cool. Now, another benefit here, because I created all of these to fit just the base Genesis 8 male, again, that's just the default mesh I chose. You don't have to go specifically Genesis 8. It could be your own custom mesh. It could be Genesis 9. It could be character creator, whatever. As long as all of the characters I create are in that specific shape, the outfit will always fit them. All right, so I set up this little visual representation just to show you the interchangeability of the rigs, interchangeability of the different clothing, and just the workflow going from bringing your clothes in, bringing your character in, to adding different animation all the way up to full motion capture with clothing animation. That may sound like a mouthful of confusing stuff. Let me just break it down very simply. Every single one of these characters here is the exact same base mesh. This is just a Genesis 8 male, which I showed you at the very beginning. This is just the preset Daz character. So starting off with number one on the far left, this is what we brought in from Ginny. This is just a T-pose and our clothing. Number two, this is what we brought into Mixmo, what I just showed you. So this has an animation, but there aren't any clothing physics. Now number three, Number three, this is just a Daz to Blender character. So whenever you download Daz for the first time, from that same bridge, you'll also be able to download this Daz to Blender plugin. This will allow you to just create your custom character in Daz, click File, Send to Blender, and then you can click this button and it'll port it directly over to Blender with the Daz rig. So if I turn this on, you can see this has the Daz rig fully connected and ready to go. So I could just go into pose mode, click G and you'll move it around. So if you want, you can follow the tutorial to do exactly what I did here, where I made the clothing for the base mesh. You can go back into Daz, create a custom character now with a different face, just in the same Genesis 8 male shape. So the clothing will fit and we can transfer the clothing onto our custom character. So here's how you can do that. So first of all, this is just the base model. I don't want this. I'm just going to click delete. The clothes will stay there. Let's take our custom Daz to Blender character that I just brought in with the bridge plugin. I'm going to select the rig. I'm going to right click and select hierarchy just so both are selected. And then over here, this yellow object properties for the location, just set that to zero so that it's easier to line up with our ready made clothes. So this is now our custom character that I just brought in from the plugin. Again, it's just a Genesis 8 character, but with different facial structure. And again, this character, if we go into pose mode, so if I click R and move the arm, the arm is moving. Now we want the clothes to follow the rig. So here's how to connect the clothes to the rig. And this will work for Mixmo versions as well. I'm just showing with the base Daz rig that comes from the bridge plugin. So first off, you want to select the normal character. You want to shift select the clothes. You want to go over to weight paint mode. And you know you've selected the right thing correctly because all the clothes will be blue, not the character. Go over to weights transfer weights, click this check and go over to vertex mapping, nearest face vertex, come over to source layer, set that to by name. Now all you have to do is select the clothing one more time, go to the modifiers and add an armature modifier, and then select the armature here to connect it. If I select the armature once more, we'll go to pose mode. Now you can see the clothes are moving with the armature. So that's how you can easily just swap from a base male to a custom rigged character that you bring in from Daz. Now this will also work with a Mixmo animation. So here is this exact same base mesh. You take a look at the shape here and take a look at the shape of the face here. This is the exact same base mesh. The only difference is I didn't touch the textures. This one, I just added in my custom face textures and I added hair. So let's show you with the Mixmo, we'll show you the exact same steps. I'm just going to delete this. I'll delete this rig as well. Make sure we remove the armature from the original clothes. Let's show you how we can swap clothes on here. So very important little extra step you have to take here. So anytime you're aligning the clothes, you want them to be in a T pose or an A pose just so they will fit the clothing correctly like this. Well, whenever you bring in something from Mixmo, it's not going to automatically start in a T pose or an A pose. It's just going to bring in just the normal animation like this. You can see the shape of the arms. This is straight from Mixmo. This is what we want. So a quick little workaround for that. You see, I set up keyframes here. So it starts in my A pose. Pose, and then it gradually goes into that animation that we brought in from Mixamo. So here's how you can set that up. First, let me reset this so it's exactly 
how it would look if you brought in a Mixmo animation. Here's what it would look like. It would automatically be like this, where it goes straight into the animation. You're going to want to go about 20 frames on the timeline right here. Again, make sure the rig is connected so you can see all these keyframes, and then just take all of the keyframes and move them over so they don't start until frame 20. Now you can go back to frame zero. We're gonna switch over to pose mode. Click A just to select all of the bones. Before you do anything, turn on auto keying, and then go up to pose, clear transformations, and then clear all. So this will clear all of the data. And because we have auto keying, it sets a keyframe. So this is the exact starting A pose. And we created that keyframe. So it goes from the A pose, which we can fit our clothing onto, and it animates into our Mixmo animation. So again, very important just to fit everything the right way. Select the armature, put the location to zero just to make it easier to line up. Again, everything fits the exact same because it's fit to the same base mesh. Now, exact same thing. Select the character. Shift select the clothes, weight paint, weights, transfer the weights, exact same thing, nearest face, by name. Now we can add in the armature and just select the rig. As you can see, just a little wave. And again, whenever you're not simulating the cloth data, things can look weird. So if you want to take this to the next level, I recommend you get Marvelous Designer. I have a free YouTube video just talking about the basic workflow of this. I also have a paid course where I talk about adding full facial animation, full body animation. So that's what this version is here. As you can see, I have all these keyframes which control facial animation. Also, if I go along the timeline, clothing is reacting with realistic physics to the full body animation. So yeah, very fun workflow. Again, you can make the clothes. You can have a collection of clothes which are all interchangeable, whether if they have the cloth physics like this one does, or if they do not have cloth physics, depending on if you want to pay the subscription or not. You can even copy a different animation and a different clothing set to a different character. So if I delete the rig here, if I delete the clothing here, let's say I want this character, but with this clothing and with this animation, select the character, shift select the character you want to replace, shift S, selection to active to move it there, delete the character you don't want. So now this is me, same outfit, connect it to the rig by clicking, shift click the rig, control P to parent, and with automatic weights. And there you go. I have a particle system here which isn't following, so I would have to go here, make sure the armature is at the beginning. As you can see, here is my face pretending I'm cool in the Yeet outfit. So again, if you want to learn more, I have that free digital fashion guide video which shows using Marvelous Designer to create fully animated cloth simulations. I also have my course linked down below that holds your hand through every step of the process and shows extra cool stuff like adding in full mocap performances. There's a sale on the course right now, plus you'll get my Blender Director 3D plugin included for a limited time. Again, link to all that will be down below if you want to check it out. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting, and I'll see you in the next one.